Have you ever wondered what happens when an airplane runs out of fuel mid-flight? Today we delve into the story of Air Transat Flight 236, a tale of a mid-air crisis that could have been a catastrophic disaster if not for the skill and quick thinking of two pilots. This event happened on August 24, 2001. The flight was scheduled to travel from Toronto, Canada to Lisbon, Portugal. The aircraft was an Airbus A330, a wide-body twin-engine jet airliner, one of the most reliable planes in the industry. At the helm were the experienced Captain Robert Piche and his first officer, Dirk de Jaeger. Captain Piche, a veteran pilot, had over 20 years of flying experience under his belt. He was known for his calm demeanor and sharp decision-making skills. On the other hand, First Officer de Jaeger, although less experienced, was equally competent and level-headed. Together, they formed a formidable team, ready to handle any situation that came their way. However, even the most experienced pilots can't anticipate every eventuality. Little did they know that their routine transatlantic flight would turn into a test of their skills and resolve, a situation that would push them to the brink of their abilities. The flight began like any other, with a full tank of fuel, clear skies ahead, and a plane full of passengers blissfully unaware of the ordeal that was about to unfold. There's a saying among pilots that the most dangerous part of any flight is the takeoff and landing, but what happens when the danger occurs at 35,000 feet? What happens when the very lifeblood of the aircraft, the fuel, begins to deplete at an alarming rate, with no airport or landing strip in sight? These were the questions that faced the crew of Air Transat 236. Questions that they had to answer in real time with no room for error. Their actions, their decisions would determine the fate of the 206 passengers on board. Let's explore what went wrong on that fateful day. On August 24th, 2001, Air Transat 236 took off as any other flight would. A typical day, a typical flight, departing from Toronto, Canada with Lisbon, Portugal as its final destination. The aircraft, a well-maintained Airbus A330, roared down the runway, lifting into the air seamlessly an uneventful takeoff that suggested nothing out of the ordinary, on board were 306 souls, a mix of vacationers, business travelers, families and flight crew, all expecting a routine transatlantic journey. The hum of the engines, the soft rustle of magazines, the quiet conversations, all these sounds formed the familiar symphony of air travel, a lullaby to those dozing off, a comforting backdrop to those gazing out at the receding cityscape below. Yet, as the plane climbed higher, carving its path through the sky towards Lisbon, no one could have predicted the extraordinary events that were about to unfold. Little did they know they were headed towards an unexpected disaster. Hours into the flight, the first signs of trouble began to appear. The serenity of the flight was interrupted by an unexpected warning signal. The low oil temperature and pressure warning in the right engine flashed, jarring the tranquility of the cockpit. The crew, seasoned by countless hours in the air, initially dismissed it as a sensor malfunction. After all, modern aircraft are complex machines, and sometimes sensors can give false readings. Imagine this scenario for a moment. You're cruising at 35,000 feet, surrounded by nothing but the seemingly infinite expanse of sky. Suddenly, a blaring alarm disrupts your calm. It's the low oil temperature and pressure warning for the right engine. But you've flown this route numerous times before, and you're confident in your aircraft's maintenance, so you think it's probably just a sensor glitch. This is a bit of common response among pilots, and often it's the right one. Modern aircraft are intricate machines brimming with sensors and systems designed to alert the crew to any potential issue. But sometimes these systems can err, sending out false alarms. And so, the crew did what many of us would do in their shoes. They dismissed the warning as a sensor malfunction. But the warning didn't stop. It persisted, a nagging reminder that something might be amiss. The crew began to question their initial assumption. Could it be more than a sensor glitch? Was there a genuine problem brewing within the right engine? The minutes ticked by, each one adding to the growing tension within the cockpit. The crew watched the instrument panel closely, hoping for the warning to disappear, praying that their initial assessment was right. But the warning stayed, a constant blip on an otherwise smooth flight, a looming shadow over an uneventful journey. 
The crew was now faced with a potential crisis. What started as a minor inconvenience had now escalated into a serious concern. The flight was no longer routine, and the crew had to make decisions that could potentially affect the lives of everyone on board. As minutes passed, the situation escalated. Suddenly, the unimaginable happened. The hum of the right engine, a constant companion to the crew, fell silent. It was a chilling void that sent a shiver down their spines. The right engine had failed. It was a moment that would be forever etched in their minds, a startling interruption in the otherwise routine flight of Air Transat 236. As they grappled with the reality of their situation, a more alarming fact surfaced. The aircraft was losing fuel at an alarming rate. The fuel gauges, once a comforting sight of readiness and capacity, now displayed a rapidly dwindling supply. The crew was in a race against time and their opponent was relentless. Imagine the cold grip of fear tightening around your heart as you watch the numbers drop, knowing that each tick of the fuel gauge is a tick off your remaining time in the air. The crew's training kicked in, but no amount of drills can truly prepare you for the reality of a situation like this. With a sense of urgency, the crew made the decision to divert to the Azores. An oasis in the vast expanse of the Atlantic, the islands represented their best hope for a safe landing. But with each passing second, their fuel supply was dwindling, and with it, their chances of reaching the Azores. Every decision now was a high-stakes gamble, every action, a desperate bid to buy more time. The crew worked tirelessly, their minds racing faster than their hearts, their hands steady despite the fear gnawing at their courage. Yet in the face of this harrowing ordeal, the crew remained steadfast. Their resolve was unyielding, their spirit unbroken. They continued to fight, to hope, to do everything in their power to bring their passengers to safety. Fuel depletion in an aircraft is a scenario no pilot ever wants to face. It's the silent enemy, the unseen danger, that lurks in the shadows of every flight. And on that fateful day, the crew of Air Transat 236 came face to face with this terrifying adversary. But the worst was yet to come. In an aviation nightmare, both engines of the aircraft failed. With a chilling silence, the left engine also ceased to roar. Suddenly, the airplane, once a marvel of human engineering, was reduced to a powerless glider floating through the vast, merciless sky. Imagine, if you will, the icy grip of fear that clenched the hearts of the crew and passengers. The rumble of the engines, once a reassuring hum, was replaced by an eerie quiet. The aircraft, once a symbol of human mastery over the skies, was now at the mercy of the winds and gravity. The plane, once a bustling hub of activity, was now a silent floating ghost ship. The cockpit was a scene of cold, calculated tension. The pilots, trained for every conceivable scenario, were now grappling with an unimaginable reality. Both engines had failed. Their airplane was a glider. Yet despite the dire circumstances, they were not defeated. There was no panic, only determination. The crew members, each a professional in their own right, worked tirelessly to regain control of their aircraft. Among the passengers, uncertainty swirled like a thick fog. The engine failure was an invisible spectre, a silent threat that hung heavy in the air. Yet, amidst the fear, there was also an unspoken sense of unity. In the face of adversity, they were all in this together, each one clinging to the hope of a safe landing. As the minutes ticked away, the crew's efforts were unyielding, but with every passing second, the ground grew closer. The once distant horizon was now an imminent reality. The shadows of the clouds below began to stretch out, reaching for the silent aircraft. Now it was a race against time. The pilots, the crew, the passengers were all caught in a silent battle against the ticking clock. With both engines failed, the only option was to glide, to use every bit of altitude and speed to their advantage, but would it be enough? Only time would tell now. It was a race against time. With no engines, Captain Peach was faced with a daunting task. Imagine, if you will, a bird with clipped wings, a ship without a sail, a car without an engine. That was the predicament Captain Peach found himself in. With the engines out, the plane was essentially a glider. A massive hunk of metal hurtling through the sky with no propulsion. What happened next was nothing short of extraordinary. For 19 long minutes, Captain Peach guided the powerless plane in a daring feat of airmanship. 19 minutes might not seem like a long time, but up there, with the hundreds of lives in his hands, each second must have felt like an eternity. He had to maintain the perfect balance between altitude and speed, all while navigating towards a safe landing spot. 
It was a high-stakes, real-life game of chess with the laws of physics. The only difference, in this game, the stakes were human lives. The destination, a military base in the Azores, an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, a speck of land in an endless expanse of water. But for those on board, it was their only hope. The crew's skill and calmness in the face of such extreme adversity were nothing short of remarkable. It's easy to panic in such situations, to let fear take over. But not this crew. They remained steadfast, their minds focused on the task at hand. They were the embodiment of the old adage, keep calm and carry on. The landing itself was a marvel of precision and control. With no engines to help slow down the aircraft, it was all up to the aerodynamics of the plane and the skill of the pilot. The runway approached rapidly, the ground rushing up to meet them, and then touched down. The plane skidded to a halt, safe and sound on solid ground. The impossible had been accomplished. A powerless plane, a glider essentially, had been landed safely by a crew that refused to give in to fear, panic or despair. Against all odds, they had survived. In the aftermath of the incident, questions needed answers. The aviation world was abuzz with speculation and conjecture. What could have caused both engines of an aircraft to fail mid-flight? The answer was not long in coming. The investigation into the near tragedy of Air Transat Flight 236 revealed a disturbing truth. A fuel leak, the silent saboteur, was the culprit. The investigation was meticulous, leaving no stone unturned. It was discovered that the fuel leak was not a sudden, unpredictable failure. Instead, it was a slow, insidious issue that had been overlooked. It all pointed back to improper maintenance. The drip, drip, drip of the lifeblood of the engines had been ignored, leading to a situation that every pilot dreads. The investigators found that the fuel leak was caused by an incorrect part installed during maintenance. A simple mistake, a moment of inattention, had nearly cost 296 lives. It was a chilling reminder of the razor-thin line between routine flight and disaster. The consequences for Air Transat were severe. The Canadian Transportation Safety Board issued a damning report criticising the airline's maintenance procedures. The incident led to an overhaul of Air Transat's maintenance operations. It also resulted in a substantial fine, a dent in their reputation and a wake-up call for the entire aviation industry. The incident shook the aviation world to its core. It served as a stark reminder of the importance of diligent maintenance. Each bolt tightened, each part inspected, each drop of fuel accounted for can make the difference between a successful flight and a catastrophe. The story of Air Transat Flight 236 is a cautionary tale. It underscores the fact that aviation is a field where there is no room for error, no space for complacency. Every flight is a testament to human ingenuity and precision, and each one demands our utmost respect and attention. The incident served as a stark reminder of the importance of diligent maintenance. Air Transat 236 is a story of disaster, resilience and survival. Let's take a moment to reflect on the key points of this harrowing incident. A routine flight turned into a nightmare when the aircraft started losing fuel at an alarming rate. With both engines failing mid-air, the crew was left to navigate a powerless plane, their worst nightmare coming to life. Despite the grim circumstances, the crew's heroism was nothing short of extraordinary. They remained calm and composed, using their training and quick thinking to glide the plane to a safe landing. Their actions saved the lives of all 296 souls on board. This incident is a stark reminder of the extreme challenges that can occur in aviation and the immense responsibility resting on the shoulders of the crew. It highlights the importance of thorough training, quick decision-making, and the sheer will to survive, even in the most dire of circumstances. The investigation that followed this incident led to significant changes in aviation safety procedures. The lessons learned from Air Transat 236 have been instrumental in making air travel safer. The aviation industry's commitment to learning from past mistakes is a testament to its dedication to safety. This story is not just about a disaster narrowly averted. It's a story about human resilience and the will to survive. It's about a crew who, faced with their worst nightmare, chose to fight rather than surrender to hope, rather than despair. In concluding, it's important to remember that in every incident, there's a lesson to be learned. In every adversity, there's an opportunity for growth. And in every human, there's an indomitable spirit that can rise to the occasion when faced with the unimaginable.
Remember, in the face of adversity, the human spirit often shows its greatest strength.